Hello, mate. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. I hope you're enjoying your water. Oh, honestly, I'm just, I'm not one of them. Are you one of them? Like, I just can't. You know, there's these people who run with bottles of water every day. I just can't drink water. <laughs> just rather yeah, than it's like, it's like a poison, isn't it? I squelch <laughs> when I walk at the moment because I'm drinking so much water. So over night time, I just have wine. Oh, no. So what, what, past six o'clock, is it? Is it like a six o'clock thing? Yeah, well, I'm normally in the studio at eight o'clock, and I finish about five o'clock. And then, then it's time for a little cigar, but, you know, wine, then I make dinner. <laughs> oh, God, because I saw a picture not long, I don't know if it was on your Instagram or Anna's, but where you were, like, asleep on the desk. Yeah, that, when I was doing Staper Boys on Block, that was a 14-day a turnaround. So that, right. was from, that was from me and Ben going we're going to make stay yeah to the record being finished so i mean i just i was doing 15 16 hour days to try and get that done oh my god that is mad well look it's so lovely to talk to you mate and obviously we've been chatting for the last few months and it's weird to think like i said chatting to anna i think it was like march and just for those that, that don't know obviously anna was obviously lolly and you sent me the loveliest message saying like you know it was really nice to watch and things like that which was really humbling for me um and then you were really shocked i asked you which I'm yeah well you know, I'm, on the, I'm on the other side of the fence so you know this me doing this is just you know Weird. just don't do this kind of thing yet yeah, you know my doors <laughs> set me up in here to you know it's just not what i do so uh i'm probably more well, uncomfortable got, doing this say, this was a lot easier than poor um, Anna, because obviously when I did Anna's chat, <laughs> it wasn't updated. Then we had to get the laptop on. Yeah, about an hour later, wasn't it? Was slow, yeah. So, um, right. So basically, how would you, first of all, what your obviously job title, there's many different things you do. For those that don't know, what would you say is like your title, so to speak? Uh, well, I'm a songwriter, record producer. Um, that's how I'd give the title, but you know, when you when you're working with artists, you become like uh, a father or a brother or a uh, mentor. <laughs> yeah, you know, you become so many different things. Because when people come in to sing, um, a lot of them get nervous, even if they've had lots of success. Yeah, uh, it's because it's something they're so passionate about and they want to do the their best. So uh, I don't know if yeah. you've noticed on my studio pitch, but I have a I stuck the word yes on the wall. So when people walk in, the first thing they do is they see the word yes. So yeah. my feeling was that they would see that and go, yeah, okay, I got that. I can, I can do yeah. this and feel comfortable. I think it's, it's like, I think what's a real, it, it's not a shame because obviously it's, it's the career you, you have chosen, but with the arts and the entertainment industry as a whole, I find there's, there's it's literally like a double-sided coin. There's all the people in front of the coin and there's all the people behind it. And there's just as many um people backstage and like this whole pandemic has shown you know someone said the other day how are lorry drivers affected by the arts and i was like well who do you think takes the set and the costumes and the equipment they don't think about it so how has lockdown been for you to be honest with you i've been in lockdown for the last 20 30 years <laughs> so i was gonna say you know I, mean, I just sit in a room every single day and if i'm flying to another country i'm going to fly and sit in another room what um for those that are kind of watching, what is primarily, I mean, I know you what it is, I know what it is, but what is, say, a music producer? It sounds really like, the thing, but to, to, in layman terms, what would you say is, what is your, your role as a music producer? Well, like I said before, it really covers so many different bases. You know, you, 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 someone just doesn't come and you put them in front of a mic and they sing. Yeah. You know, when a person walks into the room, there has to be this connection with you because it's really personal. Yeah. So, you know, whether it's a pop record or, or, or a heart rendering ballad or whatever it is, yeah. it has to be right. So if it is up-tempo, it's got to sound like it's fun and you're enjoying every second of it. So that relationship, and sometimes, you know, you've got an hour with this person because the cab's outside and they just turned up because if it was S Club 7, for instance, one would turn up in a cab, they'd go and another one would turn up. So in that time, you had to do everything you could possibly do to get the best performance yeah. and then go on to the next one. So... Um, you encompass everything. It really is, like I said, it's a brother, it's a father, someone to listen to. Sometimes people come in, they're very, very upset because personal life still carries on. Uh, uh, but your job is to yes. kind of make them safe and comfortable and get the best out of them. It's, uh, it's uh, a real mixture yeah. of things. 
straightforward. And you learn that more through time, you start to understand what your job yeah. actually uh, defines itself a lot, lot more. So, you know, I see some people now and I'm like the dad. Did you, so did you find it really hard when, because obviously a lot of these, I say like pop stars or artists in any kind of the entertainment world, there is this sense of dignity and pride and not being, you know, no one likes to be told that wasn't very good or your performance was crap or, you know, whatever. Did you find it quite difficult early on or did it something you had to learn how to do? Saying to somebody, look, you need to sing that again. You need to do that. That wasn't very good. Or you were flat. Yeah, you know, yeah, no, if you, can't, you can't go, you're flat. Or you, you just don't, and those things never, uh, unless they say it was a little bit flat. But you don't yeah. say that. So generally, right. you know, what I, what personally, this is what I do. So this is just what works for me as a producer. Everyone's got their own way of doing things. And there is no right or wrong way. We all just have different ways of working. So I yeah. normally tell eight sections of the verse, eight bridges, eight choruses, eight second verses, eight, whatever, eight each time. The majority yeah. of the time, 99.9% .9 in those eight takes, every single line is there to be able to move up. So every single word is captured. Do you understand yeah. what I mean? So it's compiling, yeah, yeah, I... rather than pushing them to get every single bit of it right when they're singing it, let them enjoy yeah. the performance. And what happens is they just start to relax. And once they relax, that's when the magic starts it's... to happen. Yeah, it's because I think from years, this I was going, I was probably like in my early twenties and um, I got a, a day in a recording studio. One of my friends that watched this will be, messing herself because she'll remember it and I, I was allowed to take a friend with me and I think I, yeah, I think she I think she thought it was going to be a really positive experience and the guy was like right sing the song and I sang it and he says I'll sing it again and I'll sing it again and I'll sing it again and I think like I could see my friend sitting there going oh my god how many times is he <laughs> gonna make him sing the same thing and then just had to leave him with it and obviously just had to copy and paste all the bits of the song to then, and it was really quick. I and mean, it was like, I think it was like a 200 pound voucher or something like that, I don't know. But um, yeah, I think people think they record it and it's all perfect in one go and it isn't, is it? <laughs> Unless you're very uh, good. I think maybe there's been two, three people maybe in my entire career, they've just come in and you go like, well, how, how do you do better than that? <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just so good immediately, but I, like I say, everyone has their own. You don't have to be the greatest singer in the world to be able to be fantastic. If you, do you know what yeah. I mean? By there, there are vocalists and there are singers. There, there's big differences between. Oh God, I don't want to say any names. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, let's, let's just say I love the Spice Girls, but no one's beneath the front. Yeah. Spice Girls, but I love the Spice yeah. Girls. You can't anything that every single element is yeah. just perfect exactly what it needed yeah. to be. I think that's the thing, is people will moan and they'll say, well, the, I think if all the Spice Girls could sing like Celine Dion or, you know, Mariah, like they could all sing, it wouldn't have been the Spice Girls. The Spice Girls were not the Spice Girls because of their voices. They were the Spice Girls because of, they were the Spice Girls. It was like the whole was an package. Empty. And I suppose, um, yeah, it's bad. So I was gonna, how did you, just go back, like, I'm always interested, how did you start? Like, did you do uh, like theory at, at college, like music, or was it uh, messing around in, in your room with, with, with decks and things? How did it start for you? I can tell you exactly how it started for me. I'd, um, I used to be a runner. I used to run for like St. Helens and Pilkingtons and be, a, I was really into my running. And I came yeah. in one night and started singing Tainted Love Was On Top Of The Pops. And I just went, uh, I want to do that. So from yeah. that, I don't know what it was, it just swept over me. So uh, then I had a little synth band in a place, a place, called, I'm, a place I'm from a place called Rainford Junction, just outside in Merseyside, basically. And we had a little okay. synth band called Bass. And used to do gigs with a shopping trolley with a little tape, tape machine <laughs> and a little <laughs> keyboard. <laughs> but really did, nice. you know, genuinely do that. And then... Um, uh, Someone had heard a demo of mine, I went to meet them in Liverpool, and then I started working in a studio called Benson Street, which is no longer there now. But that uh, had the Icicle Works, and just, I mean, just tons of uh, big Liverpool bands had, had worked in there. 
the Christians especially, and they were lovely. I remember meeting them for the first time. They were so nice. Um, but I did pop. So if I put yeah. my stuff on it, turn that crap off. Yeah. And the yeah. people I was with, um, the, the line to me was, it wasn't credible to have commercial success, which has always stayed with me. So I was like, uh, I need to go. So the only yeah. time in my life I've not done music, I was working in McDonald's and a nightclub for three months. This is when I was about 25. Wow. Just for three months than anything else, just music except this, this period. Yeah. And uh, I got a phone call saying, <laughs> this just sounds crazy, but Pete Waterman's on the phone. Uh, he's heard one of your songs and I just went, nah. Just went, nah, put the phone down. And the phone back went, no, it is me. Come and meet me. And I went to meet him in Manchester and it, it was him. Um, and he just said, oh. I think, you know, I love what you do, kid. Uh, and then I transferred. <laughs> he wanted me to go to London, so I transferred to McDonald's in London because I hadn't, it was the only thing I could do. And then after about three weeks, then I was working for Stark Aiken and Waterman. And I started doing backing, but I was doing backing vocals with Banana Rama and David Hasselhoff. My word. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a, uh, you know, it is that's a proper a brief story, version like, of the story, but. How, how these things happen, like people, I don't think people, I don't think people believe these things. You know, when you hear like, I think Mariah Carey said she used to work in a, in a hair salon. She used to sweep up people's hair. And people go, yeah, right. And miss, you know, whatever. Like, but she did. And she said, you know, I'd be singing and, you know, in, in the back room and someone heard me. And it is all circumstance. I think that's what kind of, on a personal note, annoys me. Because, <laughs> because I just think that's never happened to me. But, mate, there's no plan. What I just said to you was not planned. I had no, no idea what was going to happen at all i mean it's so unexpected so i mean so yeah. unexpected you know thinking if, if you look at it i'd be working in mcdonald's and a month later I'm, i might stop sorting out backing vocals for banana Mom. i was like I'm, I'm sitting there going this is like weird so can you i, know, can I, I was, ask mike did you you did did you write or did you i know you did the the fast food song did you write that i did no i only did a couple of songs with the fast food rockers i, did, I didn't uh you didn't oh, do up Kentucky Fried Chicken and McDonald's one. No, like that. No, <laughs> that was an old name. That that wasn't an original. I think someone had adapted it. It was it was really old. I got to do that because Mike Stock. I think it was running short of time, so he asked me to do a few oh. songs. And I think I did something on Scooch as well. I think someone said I did Zoom the other day. I don't I don't remember doing it. But um, well, I didn't know if it was like a little tribute to working at McDonald's. Being like, do you know what? No, <laughs> I. I, I <laughs> that would have been perfect actually but no no it's uh that wasn't the case at all no that, that again that, that i wouldn't have planned for that either i had no idea that was going to happen and what was it like so obviously meeting pete waterman what was he like because i mean he was i mean back in like the 80s and like the, i mean he had doing stuff with kylie and obviously steps he, i didn't even realize he was in the tragedy video he's the dj isn't he in the tragedy video yeah i mean pete started with a a, a million years ago you know he was a musical youth you, you, you know he's yeah Thing is, you know, when you when you get there, you realise that um, Pete is very much the salesman and just a genius, and Mike yeah. Stock is the writer and is an absolute genius. I mean, yeah. you know, he's my a, a writer and as a producer because I've never seen anything like that. And he was so lovely to me when when I left uh, PWL because because he was leaving, he gave me his computer and his sampler to write on. Now, to me, that was like so Thanks. huge. I could I can't even tell you that was to me. So he had faith in me and has always been lovely to me, always been respectful to me. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and he put me in his book, which I didn't know until quite recently, which I just thought was, I didn't, I didn't even know. Really? So it's just beautiful. So they're the yeah. nice little moments, you which know. Which is nice because you... you don't realise it and then you know that's how much of an impact you've made on someone as well that like, although yes to you, he's, you've gone, oh my God, that's Pete Waterman. But to him, I suppose it's like he's seen you, I suppose, not like, like grow up through the music and probably watches what you do and he's proud of you, you know, for... Oh, actually, no, when, when I... I... Sorry, there's a slight delay. Sorry if I cut you off then. Um, I, I, know thought... when he, I know when I've done E17 and Gabrielle and it was a hit that Peter turned around and said, you know, he counted it as one of his hit records. There was one of his <laughs> of boys kind did. of things. So, 
Yeah, but I, I love that, you know. In fact, you know, I had two lovely moments with Pete. I remember uh, he was going out with, uh, or he was married to going out with uh, a woman called Denise who used to be in the band Tight Fit, you know, in the jungle. Do you know that jungle? In the jungle, the mighty jungle. She was in that band anyway. So, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Pete's put on a bit of weight and she's put him on a diet. Uh, so me and him were sitting in the reception at PWL at the time. Rosie, uh, Rosie go and get me fit quids. <laughs> but like, what year do you want them from, Pete? Because it's like 10 quid. <laughs> so anyway, he was sitting there and his wife comes in and he pushes the fish and chips onto me and then slaps me on the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> and says, you know, you know I'm on a diet, what are you doing this for? And so his, his wife's saying, why are you eating in front of Pete? You know, this is, and, and he's, I'm, so I start eating this fish and chips and he's squeezing my leg <laughs> so tight under the table. So I have a lot of little memories of him. And I just Crazy. remember actually, I remember the receptionist turning around to me when I got there and she said, uh, I said, I've come to see Pete. And she said, uh, well, just give me your CV. And I, I haven't got a CV. She just, he told me to be in. She went, do you know how many people want to work here? And I went, no, I was just told to come here. And he just walked down the stairs and put his yeah. arms around me and said, you work now, Rosie. <laughs> that was it. Oh, no. wow. So, because he comes across quite, he, I'll say, because he comes across quite, uh, I can't remember what was the program he did. The pop stars, the... I think he did pop stars or something. He he was or the oh, yeah, only the pop stars. Yeah, he comes across quite quite um, like humble and things, but you, you're not mess with him. Who is like out of interest? Who is your musical influences? Then? So obviously you said you like listen. Like, I take a soft sell. Listen to that. Who were like the people that you were listening to as well? When when I was a kid, I mean it was soft sell, Depeche Mode, um, the Human League. Uh, Actually, it probably soft sell Yazoo, uh, uh, you know, Alison Moyer was just right up there as one of my heroes. Mark Holmans, I've never, never got to meet him. And uh, Anna was, uh, Lolly was doing a gig with Right Said Fred and Mark Holman. So I was so desperate to meet him because I wanted to say, you know, I do this because of you. And, and then COVID hits and yeah, I never yeah. got a chance to do it. So I'm be addressed and I can get to meet oh. him. But, but childhood stuff, 80s stuff. Is and you know yeah. Duran Duran all that kind. Of... Yeah, I loved. Um, well, I know it's really. I think doing all of these different things. I love doing all of them. But when I got to, I got to interview Doris from Five Star, and I inside there was a, like the little me, like. Yeah. Five Star were fantastic. <laughs> like... Rain or shine, just such oh. a beautiful records, beautiful. Yeah, amazing, and I just don't think there's it's. It's such a shame because, like, the songs like that. I was saying to someone long ago, like, you'd never buy like uh, a S Club Seven record or Five Star and have to check it for like swear words, especially when I'm yeah. teaching with it. Whereas now, every even little mix of song, I'm like, I have to check every single thing, and I just I think music obviously is changing with the times and whatnot. But it's um, it's nice obviously. That, so I was going to say, I don't I. How did you meet? Did you sort Lolly? Was it your project? I don't know what. Yeah, no, I, I created uh, Lolly. Was my I remember driving through the Blackwell Tunnel in London, <laughs> and they had the idea. And I went back to the studio and I got an old drum machine out and suddenly got a Jupiter Eight. Yeah. Any music fan will know what a Jupiter Eight is, and it's like pretty good. Synth. And uh, I wrote uh, Telephone Boy. Right. And I just had this idea, and then I thought this actually could really work, and then. Then I always wanted Anna to do it, but she was in Starlight. I always, for some reason, she was always in my mind as the perfect person to do it because she was an actress. Yeah, and she's musical fit, wasn't she? she was kind of me. Yeah. Oh, she just no, no, you know, even though Rachel Stevens was approached to be the first Lolly, Rachel was perfect yeah. in Esther, but but Anna's a, a much more of an. I mean, she was in the West End in Starlight and Hard Time. Yeah, the lead was at sixteen. She knew stage. She knew how to take direction. Uh, so yeah. it was the perfect fit. So then I wrote Viva La Radio. Then Simon Fuller went, I want to do this with your mic. And uh, Lucy and Grange at the time, head of Universal English, went, I want to do this. Everyone kind of jumped on it. And ironically, I'd gone to Simon Cowell first because I had a really nice relationship with Simon. And uh, he didn't, he, no, he just, I just can't see it, Mike. And then he was at the launch party and I'm going, I messed up, didn't I? Should have done it, shouldn't I? <laughs> it was just like, 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that's like I said. Um, I said to Anna, with her being Lolly, it was. I said that it wasn't a no disrespect to her, but I said the songs because I think cheesy music. Like you look at all the cheese that was around in the nineties. I don't think it got the gratification it deserved. And some of the songs, what's hilarious, you actually go to sing these songs. They're really hard songs. Some of them, like and they're high. Some of them. and I, I think I people forget that she's particularly trained. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, they're insane. I mean, the thing is, as well, when I write songs, I write in a uh, a woman's key. I never write songs singing like this. I always sing yeah. high. So when a, uh, then it'll get transposed. So it ends up just going even higher than that. But for those particular songs, it had to be yeah. that way. I, I, my original idea was to make it look like um, a Japanese import. That's what I wanted it to be. Oh, so I came with Pokemon. Uh, I had a whole vision what to do but then uh, you know it didn't come to fruition but that was the starting plan it was just meant to be fun oh, and uplifting because i mean that's massive now obviously like the black the black pink and the girls generation and um the boy it's massive now and like it's weird all the kids come over and it's hilarious they're all i used to be mouthing the words to like you know steps and things like that and now they're coming up with some stuff in korean and <laughs> these different languages and i'm like where have you learned that <laughs> they're like about, yeah. about uh, must be about 10 years ago, ago now, um, I got invited to go to uh, Japan. Uh, and it was a total accident. Again, you can't plan these things. So they were pushing some guy as a yeah. songwriter. There, and then this guy had heard one of my songs. And then they took it. And then five or six songs later, they went, you've got to come over. So I ended up going over there. And I remember uh, I was right in the middle of Tokyo. And there was this poster. And I swear it was like, 600 foot by 700 foot. Uh, I've never said it's just so big. That's not big. Yeah. I'm talking big. And uh, <laughs> yeah. so I was, I basically, I was doing what would have been the equivalent to take that an E17 in the UK, but in Japan. So these people yeah. were doing like 50,000 people in an arena. The stage was so big, they drive around in cars. So I had uh, two number one albums out there with, the, and, and I was only there for two weeks. It was the strangest, strangest thing, but really a, a, an amazingly fun time because I love Japan. It's just it's awesome. Yeah. Do you think you'll ever... Do you, have you ever thought about writing a book about all the stories and the things you've done and stuff, you know? Yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, the, my, I mean, my problem, honestly, is that I'm dyslexic. So the idea of sitting there trying to write, I mean, even filling in a form is, is just so difficult for me. I can see That's things. why you pay something, Mike. That's why you pay someone to sit there and listen to it and then... Yeah, maybe. You know. I, I, I think it's, it's someone's adaptation of what you're saying sometimes. So people make... Yeah. If I'm saying it, I want it to be like I've said it. You've, rather than yeah. someone else's own interpretation. But yeah. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Maybe eventually it'd be something I think about, but, uh, you know, I, I'm just sitting there enjoying playing the keyboards and... <laughs> Yeah. And making well, music to I've, I've, got some, I've got some questions for you. But there's one thing I want you to tell me, because I don't know if you remember this. You said you had a story for me about a certain artist that I really love. And my dad is not with me anymore, obviously, but he was the one that got me into listening to her music. And I still listen to All right. Cried Out is one of my favourite songs. And he said you had a really good story. And the Wi-Fi... Yeah, I mean... Go, well, do it. Take so it It's bittersweet. It's bittersweet, but uh, I was with my mate James. Uh, we went to see uh, Alison in the Royal Court in Liverpool. And this has gone back a long time ago. And we, there's no seat, so you just run up to the front. Yeah. So I'm telling this a and I'm doing Roachford at the time. And I'm telling him this story. And he was, I didn't know he was the A&R man for Alison at the time. So oh, every time came over to me, I screamed. <laughs> and she went, this is for you, only you. And I was like a dizzy school girl. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. So I told him this story and I just went, oh, I've always loved her. You know, it's amazing. So I'm in my shoes in London. I get a knock at the door. And I open the door and it's Alison Moyer. And I've gone, you are Alison Moyer. <laughs> I go in there. I, cl I close the door and went, that's Alison. You're Alison. I was so shocked. And she went, you look like my ex husband. Where's the pub? And I just <laughs> put, her, put her arm around me and took me down to the pub and was sitting there and I kept on going, you, you're, you're, you're Alison Moy. Yeah. Like, and then she said to me, um, she had this song called Should I Feel? 
and uh, she'd you know she'd written it. It's just you know I was going to produce it. So she uh, came to the studio and she sang, and it was like a lorry coming towards you. It's the first time I've ever just stood there and looked at somebody because she was an idol of mine, but her voice was just yeah. it was just a truck. I've, you know, I just couldn't I, unless you're in the room with her, you just no idea how incredible. It does. It was. Yeah, uh, and then um, I asked her to do backing vocals. And she went, no, I don't do backing vocals. Oh, no, ad-libs, sorry. And she went, I don't do ad-libs, babe. And I was like, but you're answering mine, what do you mean? She went, I don't do them. She went, you do them and I'll copy you. So I was like, one of the most embarrassing moments of mine, because I'm like, me, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> did you scream? Did you go, ah! Uh, listen, <laughs> but I did it. And then I did the record. And then um, I remember i just finished a North and South record, like literally one day after the other. And I was lying in bed and there was an answer machine message. And the first one was from North and South saying to me that they didn't want me to do backing vocals on their records anymore because it was too precise. And the second message was from Alison Moy that the backing vocals on the records are the best that she's ever had on any song she's ever done. You were like, well, that, that one. <laughs> but then, I said, so this is the music business for you now. So I've called Alison and said, you know, I'm so honored to be, you know, she, I mean, she couldn't not know I think she was amazing because I just kept on saying it, basically. Uh, and then, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just couldn't help myself because it really was like just a true childhood hero, you know? And uh, yeah. and then the A&R man turned around and said, uh, if you're going to work with Mike, then he has to write and produce all your songs. And she never spoke to me again. And that was all because of an A&R man. And it was like, I called her up and said, I am so disrespectful in a billion years. I've got all your, no way would I suggest writing a single word. But that's, that's what, you know, and I know she's probably been through a lot. So as soon as she heard that, she probably thought, not doing that. Because I'm at that stage, yeah. I just got. So I apologised and yeah. tried to get through it a few times, but that, that sadly ended. And I was so gutted because, you know, it was, yeah. yeah. It's the music it's business. Weird. It's really, I mean, obviously you, with you working in the industry and you're very much, you're very high profile with the people you work with. So I'm not as, I reckon what I've always been like, tried to be professional to a point, but I'm now, I think as I've got older, I'm more now like, uh, <laughs> how do I word it? Just, I'm not a nasty person. And when someone, I've sometimes, I have been shocked a couple of times when I've done shows and things and it does knock you. And people, I think that's what's so weird. The entertainment industry is so, it can be the best moment of your life and it's the number one or it's the best feeling and everything's going good or it can be the one person's decision that just completely changes your life forever. For the they good. run for the They run yeah. parallel. When it's fantastic, there's another stream on the other side which isn't perfect in any way, shape or form and they run parallel. Always, always will. It just, it's just what it is, you know, because very few people really want people to be successful. They don't really like that. No. Uh, it, it kind of, uh, and I don't think it's about your success. It's like where will their place be when you have success? Where will they, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Where do they? Where do they? Find this. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, you know, unless it's genuine old friends, who you know yeah. you play football with you and your kid and you've gone on to have success. Yeah. They kind of go. Well, you. Yeah. I was going to do that. So, and they, and they, and I, I, they like that, and you can see, and I like that they like that because I know that's real. Uh, but you'll yeah. get other people who will hold you responsible for their career. So if somebody came to me and wanted to make a record or sing, and I just thought, I just can't do this. There was a girl who came to me a couple of years ago who, who just sang out of time. And I was trying to explain to her, yeah, but I like that. And I went, I don't understand. It's out of time. It's not, it's out of time. And I just thought, <laughs> yeah. I just can't. But she would hold me. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that she does. It's just one, I'm just giving you one situation where people would go, yeah. now. Nah, not successful it's your fault and um, i was turned down thousands of times thousands of times to get the few records that i did do it wasn't all just handed to me on a, nothing has ever a few things have come through the door that are just unreal uh because i've been in the situation i've yeah. been on the pitch face and i've got the ball for a little bit yeah <laughs> use it <laughs> uh, but it's yeah it's, yeah you have some fairy tale moments there are some moments i've had in my life that you know, I remember um, 
when I just done uh, Lolly with Simon Fuller, I got a phone call saying, Simon wants to have a meeting with you. And uh, it was in Franco Zeffirelli's house. Franco Zeffirelli uh, made Ben Hur, you know, the big old movies yes. with Charles. Oh, good. So, so I went to stay in his house, and I was in Elizabeth Taylor's and Richard Burton's room. <laughs> and you kind of look in there going, this, you know, I, I was in the, I was in the shop. Did you take I'd have taken the soap or something, or a bit yeah, of yeah. paper. No, what I, I, I did do was we, we went over to this uh, island of Capri, and uh, on the way back, because it was a, we were in the uh, apparently it was uh, Sean Connery's speedboat, the real uh, James Bond boat, and yeah. I jumped off, put in the James Bond thing, and then I looked up, I was about two miles away. <laughs> but it's, by the time I got there on the beach, I was just dead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I thought it was bad. Right? Uh, well, I, just because it was so quick on the boat, I thought this one was taking long. I was like, oh, no, this was a really Yeah. Bad idea. This, the thing, this but, is why you should have some kind of book, because I think, like, <clears throat> stories like this that, I mean, it must be lovely that, obviously, you've got your stories. Anna's got her stories from her side of things. And, obviously, like, you're, and it's your friends and, and family seeing what you do. And I think that's what's really lovely. It's like a completely different side of, of what you see and what you hear. And, and it's just great. I can listen to you. I'm just sitting there going, this is amazing. <laughs> no, it's it's brilliant. But what I was going to say, what you said about the the people, it's very it's very hard when obviously you do get successful, knowing who your friends are and who the people do want you to su succeed. And I think that's why a lot of people, when they do make the big time, um, or they get that number one, or they get that, you know, they it's normally people do find it really hard to make friends. <clears throat> and I found this as well with doing these chats as well, like that I try and come across that there's been, not naming names, but there's been really lovely people like yourself and Anna and Selena and Doris that have been like, yeah, of course I'll chat. But there has been, I think people get so hounded by either fangirls or very strange people. And that's not what I want this to be about. I want it to be about sharing stories like this. So this is brilliant. I'm honestly, mate, I'm buzzing. <laughs> I think it depends what level you're at. You know, I've, I've met certain people who've been, you know, insanely successful. And yeah. uh, nicest, uh, you know, uh, name dropping here. Been, um, Do it. Do it. All listening. I, I just walked out of the room and there was Mick Jagger and George Michael. And I'm just walking oh, out. Oh, man. Oh. Okay. And you, go, you, can't, you know, you can't go... Oh my! You have to go. No. Inside, yeah. you're going. I was sitting down having breakfast, and yeah. they came and sat with me, and I was feeding George's dog, having a cup of tea. And in my mind, they're going, "How's it going?" And I'm thinking, "Oh my god!" Yeah, it's and weird. Yeah. Because you're so excited, and I, and I still always want to maintain that when I meet people. If I'm making records, I'm excited. You know, um, I'd known obviously Boys on for a long, long time, but when I first yeah met properly and met abs properly and dane i'd known ben for 20 years anyway you know yeah. i'm like a fan but i'm excited to be yeah. in the room and to make the records with them and, and that's why i think it, it is what it is uh yeah and also like, the boys have just done a duet with the uh, the beautiful heather small from m people yes. and no one's going to expect what this record is but you know and she is just like She's like a ray of sunshine, that woman. When she walks in the room, it's like, poof, she's amazing. So, yeah. and, and that's only been, recent. and also the amazing Jazz Ellington as well, who's just, it's just, I'm lucky. Quality. Yeah, you re I mean, I think it's, like you say, you have to do this moment where I think you see people. And I've said to my friends when we've been out and we've been, been to different events, there is that part of you that goes, Oh my God. I've only, I think I've only been starstruck once, like properly, properly starstruck. And actually Abs was there. Abs and um, Scott and Sean were there with Natasha because they were doing a gig. But although they were really good, I weren't there to see them. I was there to see the Backstreet Boys. And oh, okay. they were like my prime favorite boy band. And um, I just, I, I just remember being like, I don't know what, <laughs> how to be i was like cause there was a huge huge part of me that was just so jealous and envious and i said that to them i went you have the career i only ever dream about and um but they get and I, there was the other part of me that was so worried because i thought if they turn out to be absolute yeah. you know I was, yeah. I was, i'm gonna be mortified because 
all their music will never sound the same to me. I'll be like, well, I remember yeah. when I met them and they were being, but they, but thankfully they, they, they were nice. And... I, met, I met a, I didn't meet, sorry, outside my studio window. This is when I was in uh, the strong room in London was Vince Clark. You know, Vince Clark is a writer of Yazoo. So I go in and I wanted yeah. to, and I couldn't do it because I thought if you're not who I think you are, yes. I'm devastated so I, I i i'm totally the same as you because that thing of like oh my i just want to tell you you're amazing yeah i know you know you, can't, you know well i think when i turned onto mike stuck when i first went into the room with him i just went oh man you just great me went out oh, you wanker <laughs> <laughs> and then we wait <laughs> uh you know because just like it's the way he diffused it but it was lovely yeah it sets, it sets the level where you are and, and it goes. Well, look, mate, I've got to ask you some questions. So some quick questions that people have asked. You did get some questions. I know you're worried no one's going to watch, but people watch. Mate, I just think the chat. And then, and then we just FaceTimed. Um, yeah. Right. So you've worked with many different people. Mike, who would you say is one of your favourite favorite artists you have worked with? And I think as well, it said I've written easy. I think they meant like maybe the easiest person you've worked with or one of the favourite people you've worked with. Um. Definitely Tony Mortimer. I mean, I still speak to Tony for 17. Yeah, he's just the real, he is what he is. Uh, I, you know, yeah. I, I, and also uh, I really like Terry as well. And I should, I should go set up Brian's studio for him and work with him as also. But out of all of them, I definitely had a, a, a thing with Tony. Um, Tony. Obviously Ben from um, Fats and Small, again, because we've just been friends for such a long, long time. Yeah. Um, Lovely. Lovely. Oh, no, yeah, just the real deal. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's been quite a lot of... Uh, Kylie was lovely. She was just lovely. You know, she was just dead, dead nice. But we're not mates or anything. It's like, you know, you walk into a pub and get a job. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and you just got... It's the next person that walks in. But, she, you know... Um, I mean, on the whole, to be honest, you know, most people are, are okay. There's, there's a few nightmare people. But as you get older, you understand. You have no idea what's going on in their lives. No, no. Or what they're going so, on you know, that day... What Read before they get in, you get into a studio and you're like, great, I've got to get the best vocal out of you. And yet I know this has been in the news today and it's probably on your mind. <laughs> so yeah, Mike, you very clear, yeah. have you seen the comment? <laughs> no. Did you say? Oh, sorry. I'm uh, guessing uh, my favourite artist is Lolly to work with. Is that... what, it says, Dad, when's dinner ready? <laughs> <laughs> I've taken a book in, I've been making Thai food. Oh. Uh, uh, so, uh, but um, what's it, what's that? Uh, what were we saying then? Sorry, I've got thrown off by the menu. Now okay, I'm thinking. So, well, that, no, that was the question. So, to the people you've worked with, um, what is the? This is a good one. What is the best piece of advice you would give to a singer before they come into the studio? Uh, just rehearse the song. Know the song, so you're not looking at a piece of paper. Uh, you know, if you're continuously distracted looking around, learn the song and make the song as as personal to you as you possibly can. Yeah. Uh, it really is about just practice, 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 practice. So you just, you know it inside out. And if you want to work your ad libs out, uh, I mean, a lot of the time, uh, I call it bat and ball. So we're just yeah, sitting well, there and yeah. off each other. But learn, just learn it. There is no, there is no quick way, you know, uh, uh, it's old school. It's in the oven. It's not a microwavable thing. It's old school. Yeah. Practice, practice, Put practice. Work in and learn it. And question three, what is a track you wish you'd had written? Um, there's a song called, uh, you won't even know this, but there's a song called If I'm Not In Love With You by Faith Hill. And it's so beautiful. Oh. And uh, I got in contact with the guy through my management time. He's going to come over and write with me. Uh, but 9-11 happened. That's how long ago that was. Wow. Yeah. But that, that song I just always thought was just breathtakingly. Faith Hill's vocal is just, I mean, she takes you on a journey. It's just beautiful. So that, that song. Yeah. So my favourite record in, in the world is Raining Men. But uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it really <laughs> Gay anthem. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, I think you've kind of answered it. It's a, do you sing, Mike? Have you, I yes, think, I, way, have you got tracks of you where you've used to your singing? 
I did start off being a singer, but I didn't, I didn't, um, I wasn't fulfilled by it. So I remember, remember Sonia? Yes. Try to out to her. <laughs> I, I, I sang, uh, well, I, amongst other artists, I was one of the artists who supported it at the Philharmonic and I just thought, I don't want to do this. I, I, I liked the studio. Uh, yeah. So, but yes, every record I've ever released, uh, there's, I'm doing backing vocals on it. Every single record. So all Lolly's rec backing vocals are just me. Really? Um, yeah, every record. Oh, well, if you listen to the, yeah, the, so the, the karaoke versions you'll hear, you'll just hear it's just a man, yeah. So I do sing, yeah, but I, I don't class myself as a singer, just as a, a backing yeah. vocal. Yeah. Well, what I thought I'd do, because I, you've been so great doing this, is do a little game with you. So you love Depeche Mode, don't you? Yes. They're with you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, oh, my, I pass out. <laughs> Cardboard cutouts, mate. Right. So we're going to see how well you know them and how well you know your music. So I'm going to read a line, and you've got to tell me what song it is. Of theirs. Okay. See how good a fan you are. Right. Song number one. The graph on the wall tells the story of it all. Everything counts. Ding! Well done. <laughs> it's obvious you hate me, though I've <laughs> done nothing wrong. Yeah, nothing bad. People are people. Yeah. Ding. Very good. Right. Number three. By the way, there's no money in this. I have to send you money. <laughs> <With> peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boop. Off. Um, come with me into the grass and let hours Stri pass. Stripped. Yeah. Okay. Three more. We slip and slide as we fall in love. Easy. Just can't get enough. Yeah. What did you think of the Saturday's version of that? I didn't like it at all. <laughs> yeah, Not exactly. one second. No. I, I just have to be honest. Didn't like it. No, I, to be fair, it used to wind me up. I, it shouldn't have been touched. I didn't mind um, uh, Walk This Way when Sugar Babes and Girls Aloud did that, but I, was, I just enjoyed it. Comic yeah, really. that, that bother me because it's not a Depeche Mode record. If it's a Depeche Mode it's, record. It's a Depeche Mode. Yeah. Yeah, and it's my um, childhood stuff. Right. There'll be times when my crimes will seem almost unforgivable. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I know it, but I can't. There'll be times. I know that, I know. Oh, pass. I know it, though. Uh, there will be times when oh, my crimes will seem almost unforgettable. I, I can hear it. I can hear the, the, uh, uh. I'll give you a clue. Oh. Two oh. words. And the last word is love. Ah, strange love. You see, that wasn't a great record. And they say it's their <laughs> worst record. Yeah, that's what I mean to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Last one. <laughs> Life's never better. It's so sweet with you. My head's in a spin. That doesn't sound like a Depeche Mode title. Yeah. Is that a Depeche Mode song? Sounds like a Kylie lyric. It doesn't sound like a... No, no, it's a lolly record. <laughs> it's a lolly record. <laughs> I was thinking both of them in a spin. <laughs> <laughs> you asked me then, mate. I was... <laughs> nice, I don't, nice, never better. So, sort of, you might Persempo Amore. Yeah, I know that one, yeah. But in fact, I can tell you a quick story about that. <laughs> Anna's friend at the time. Go for it. His dad was uh, Italian. <laughs> and I turned around to him and said, we were, we're having a barbecue to, 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 uh, for the success of Viva La Radio. And I said to him, What does forever in love mean? And he went, Sempre Amore. Persempo Amore. And I went, Thank you. And that was it. That's where that song one. came from. You're like, brilliant. That is awesome. I remember it well. <laughs> that is amazing. Belle, mum didn't even get that, she said. <laughs> <laughs> and she, does, she thinks it's Viva La TV. She's got no Friends idea. Like... Yeah. Right, the last thing, what I do, Lolly's, <laughs> and, uh, Lolly, Anna's probably told you this, so pick one or the other. So, tape or vinyl? I need to finish my water as well. 
Hey, you enjoy that. Uh, tape or vinyl? Uh, tape? Yeah. yeah. Tell you what, the 80s or the 90s? <laughs> 80s. Thai food or chips? Both. <laughs> it's you a Thai. You can tell I've spoken. <laughs> See, I did that. <laughs> you can tell I've spoken to her. <laughs> yeah, I, I literally, I love chips with oxygen. Whatever is, whatever's happening, there's normally chips. But um, I am trying to cut oh. down. I'll be, if I get any bigger, I'm going to be in a parade float. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it's made me laugh. Um, right, Backstreet Boys or NSYNC? Oh, that's a toughie because they were both great. I mean, I'm a massive yeah. Justin, Justin Timberlake fan. Um, but Backstreet Boys. Oh. oh, good. What do you prefer working with, boy bands or girl bands? You have to choose. Um, oh, God, it's a difficult one, you know, because... I mean, most of the time I've done it, it's been boys and girls. It's never just... Yeah. I'm memories of just boy bands and now just girl bands. Um, yep. Oh, boys. The boys. Okay. Vikings or Game of Thrones? Oh, you really have been talking to <laughs> <laughs> uh, Do you know what? It's just so weird for me to even like these products. It's just what I've just really got into them. So as I'm cooking... You want outside to of Viking, the throne, so uh, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna have to say uh, I love Ragnar Lothbrok, so I'm gonna have to say Vikings. You don't okay. even know that is um, New York, New York City or Vegas? New York every day, favorite place in the world. Um, li last two lyrics or the music? Oh, they come together. They come together. I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't separate them. I can't separate them. I feel, it's... Like, I feel like I'm stressing you out. <laughs> you gonna be like, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, that's one question I've never been asked. So, I mean, people say, was well, it the music first or the lyrics as you're writing a song? So, you know, if a message takes you somewhere, the lyrics may follow. Or sometimes it's like, you know, with Percent Bray Mori, for instance, it was the... Yeah. This, I, mean, I, I learned a great... I, oh. if, if there's a writer, so producers out there, this was the best bit of advice I ever got. And this is from Mike Stock, who sold over 200 million records. So yeah. listen to it if you're serious about doing this. He, it's the most simple thing. He turned around to me and said, what do you do when you write songs, Mike? And I said, well, you know, and he went, start with the song title. And it sounds so simple. And it changed my Gosh. life. Because you go, if the song's about fish and chips, you know what you're going to write. Yeah. It's just... It just start with the title, then do the rest. To me, that was like this huge door opening. It was like, oh my god, best bit of advice I ever got. Viva la radio or per simple amore? Uh, probably viva la radio, purely because of its innocence and because of what it started. Because I, I, I almost wanted it to be like, uh, I loved Aqua and stuff like that, so I wanted that innocence. Yeah. Yeah, um, loved that. Loved so, that. What's the song they did? The uh, I loved. It wasn't one of the biggest ones. Good morning, sunshine. I loved that song. I thought it was great. They did a song called Aquarius, which was just so beautiful. And in fact, we yeah. got to. I got to work with Aqua. I did a record with them, and then uh, they broke up halfway through the record. And the song was about Cliff Richards, but I can't tell you <laughs> what. what <laughs> It was nice, and the, the big ball guy walked in because you know there's an app. So as soon as he walked in, I turned because he's huge, yeah. And I turned around yeah. and I said, "I feel like mini me," because <laughs> he was just <laughs> so big, hurts me. Just I, lovely. I, I love all the little stories. Well, the last thing I ask, I ask every single person. It's the last question to wrap it up. Basically, you kind of said it with the music side of things. What would you say is your best bit of advice in general? So like, it could be like a life motto, something you live by, something you, that's been passed down to you, something you say to, to Bella, like your top um, bit of advice. I think at the end of the day, you know, because so many people have opinions on who you are and what you're gonna do. Uh, um, so in a sense to me, when I 
when I turned around and said what I wanted to do, people would say, who do you think you are? How do you think you can do that? Yeah, and at the time, I you know the pools numbers. No, it wasn't a lot. It was the pools. Like, we go, no, no, well, you know how my life's going to pan out. You must know a certain, you know, a little sequence of numbers. Yeah. And he used to look at me and I go, you've got no idea what my holds and neither do I. So for someone to say, you'll never make it or you'll never be successful or it's never going to happen, you just don't know. I, I couldn't have planned my life in any way, shape or form. Everything that's happened has just happened. Say is don't let anybody else dictate your future or tell you what you can or you can't achieve. Um, it doesn't matter. Simon Cowell, and I love him, mate. I, I, I've got many a night drunk with Simon Cowell in PWL and, um, you know, but he, I asked him, could I get a publishing deal? He went, no, it won't happen for you, Mike. And I signed to Sony three weeks later. He told me Lolly wouldn't work and I got it signed. Yeah. You know, nobody knows. And it, as, I don't mean any, any animosity at all. I look, he was always so beautiful to me. I was such a lovely man. I've got nothing but love for him. But yeah. he doesn't know. And no. nobody, nobody knows anything. At the, the amount of times I'll never have a studio, I'll never have a hit record. I just, the list is endless. And if I went, oh, okay, yeah. it would be over so much. Is just do what you do, stay in your lane, and perfect yeah. what you do. If you're a singer, practice every day because if you ain't, there's someone out there who is. No yeah. matter what, you know, when you see these. I see, it makes me laugh when I see these YouTube clips of people producing records and they're all sitting there doing this. Imagine doing that for 12 hours. Yeah. It's in a world of what people think, but it's not, it's sitting there for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. You know, eight, 12 hours a day by yourself. It's yeah. hard work, dedication. So my advice to anybody is it's, it's old school. It's hard work and dedication. And integrity, you know, be the person that you, you want people to look up to and respect. Do what you say yeah. you're going to do. Don't go, oh, I'll do it in a week's time from now. Or, do what, when you say it's going to be delivered at this time, deliver it at that time. No yeah. matter what, yeah. do what you say you're going to do. And then what yeah. happens, you build a reputation where people go to the He's point of God. Do it. It's yeah. safe. You know, once it goes to you, then I, I, I'm in good hands. Yeah. It's so important, you know, because people just kind of, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, tomorrow, man. Yeah, and it's just... Yeah, 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 yeah. Leave it with me, leave it with me. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. work. If someone's really interested and they want to work for you, I, I've, I've always had a strong work ethic. So there are people out there who are a million times more talented than me. Millions, be just better at everything than me, but have no work ethic. Yeah. And work ethic is the great equaliser. Yeah. It, it, Nothing can stop it. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're the best singer in the world and you don't do anything about it. And I'm an average singer and I do everything about it. I think your passion shines through. So talking to you now, uh, like just the way you write messages, the way you are, you know, on your, like your Facebook, your Instagram, you're proud of your work. And I think that's what shows off. And it's credit to you as, you know, as an artist that you have, you have, it's shown with the work that you've done and how it's kind of progressed to where you are. So I think exactly, and I think what you, you've hit the nail on the head with, just because something didn't work for one person doesn't mean it's not gonna work for you. So they might be saying, oh, don't do that because it won't work, but that's because it was them, it's not you. Yeah, so, you dream your dreams, it's your future, it's not theirs. And yeah. you, know, you know, unless someone's saying, you know, don't jump off that cliff. <laughs> that is gonna that, hurt. <laughs> yes. But yes. you know, uh, to, to, you know I, and music is fallible, you know, that there were people, I mean, I, I remember sending a song to uh, Victoria Beckham and they went, oh, never work. And I repackaged it and made up a whole new name and sent it to them and they, they put it on hold for it because they thought it was great. Man, it just doesn't make sense. So, you know, when people come into this and go, yeah, but business is business. And you just go, no. The music business is where someone shakes your hands, pats you on the back, tells you they're going to see you tomorrow and you never see them again. <laughs> you just yes. have to kind of, my, my, my dearest friend who passed away, a guy called Steve Coy, was in the band Dead or Alive. He was just my best yeah. friend in the he, 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 worst thing that ever happened in my life losing him and uh, yeah. he always said to me Mike if the check ain't cleared it means shit yes. and they were his words and it's exactly right Stop until the yeah. bank it doesn't matter what anybody tells you it ain't real so, hard well, one honestly, because you like people and you want them to be telling the truth <laughs> but yeah. they don't <laughs> but, honestly I think 
from people in the comments and like you doing this and it's just it's 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 been quite um i think enlightened is a bit of a strong word but like i opening, listening to you and some of the things that you've been saying that is is twigging with me a little bit There's a couple of things you've said that i'm like you know what you it's nice to hear from someone else um in a different but even just hearing how you know you got to you know where you are in the mcdonald's thing to the people that you've met to the people that but the actual, you know, your work ethic of where you are now. And it's, it's been absolutely amazing to chat to you, pal. Honestly, I really appreciate it. And you've taken your Friday evening off to, to have a nap with me. <laughs> and you Mate, I'm not you didn't even be interested in speaking to me. So it's like, you know, like, I thought you were lovely with Anna. So it's, it's a real pleasure to speak to you. It really is. So I wish oh, you all the best on doing what you're doing, man, because you're great at it. You really are. You need your own TV oh, show. God, I don't know about that. I would love it, but... I'll probably get taken off after like three days from saying the wrong thing. <laughs> I don't know, you see, so you're already determining your own future there. <laughs> yeah, bit, of, bit, of a father, bit of a father in nudge there, you mate. Just to... uh, well, I tell you, if I get it, I'll get Anna on like first segment, you can do the second, and then I'll Bella dance in the corner. Do you know Bella? Oh, okay. Amazing. <laughs> Bella's got some, some uh, incredible things just on the horizon. Uh, I can't, I can't. He's but, done a picture. Oh, I mean, I know there's photographer talent that's done, but the one she said she's got in the doorway, and I messaged her, and I was like, that's a really good, like, oh my God, it's, you must be so proud. Do you know what, it's her direction though, you know, she knows exactly what she wants. She's very individual yeah. in, in the way she approaches things. Uh, and that's come from, not, you know, not a fantastic place from being to different schools and being bullied for being individual to now embracing being individual. Yeah. And this is that thing that to happen for her because, She's on her path. She's on her lane. She's staying in her lane, no matter what anybody says. And that's yeah. the most important thing. I think that's where success comes from, because people when people say things, they they just can't know. They just don't right. know. You know. I'm going. What do you? It's it's a guess. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like they go. Oh, when you're 50, this is going to happen. They. Yeah. She's just, just doing it. No. Yeah, yeah. They just don't they do what you love. I mean, you know, for me, I'm I'm. I'm 55 or 50, 54, 55. And I'm still sitting in the studio making records. Yeah. I'm still doing it. I was told when I was like 15 or 16, it would never happen. In fact, my my uh, careers teacher, when I said I wanted to make music, she went, uh, don't be stupid. What, do you want to do a real job? And I went, I know what I don't want to do. Oh. And she went, well, that's a start. And I went, I don't want to do what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I love that line. When are you going to get a proper job? I, I get that now. I get, um, I get when, when am I going to grow up? I get that a lot, or I get a lot of people quite patronising, and they're like, oh, well, you know, you, you do, you're a dance teacher, what's your real job? Like, what, what do you actually do? I feel like saying, well, I work at Ann Summers, mate. I don't, I just don't, I just feel like making some crap up, just, just to see what they'd say. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. oh, mate, honestly, thank you so much for, for doing this, I appreciate it. Have an amazing weekend, um, and um, yeah, the best of luck to you, honestly, um, and stay in touch, all of you. Yeah, defo, yeah. Oh, well, look, have a great weekend. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, show me the wine. I knew that was coming. Yeah. Show you water. <laughs> I've done yeah, it. I'll, I'll go. <laughs> quick, quick trip to the toilet and you're all finished. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, honestly, cheers. Stay safe and have a great uh, rest of your weekend, buddy. Take care. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.